In this video, we're going to discuss that which all parties fear the most, the dreaded total party kill. Hello and welcome to Attacks of Opportunity. I'm your host, John Sprunk. Today we're going to talk about the dreaded total party kill or TPK. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you very much. Okay, so what is a total party kill? It's a gamer term for when an entire team dies. So in D&D terms, this is when the entire party buys the farm. Okay, so you and your friends are having a great time playing some D&D. You're in a fight, you're fighting some monster, maybe it's the boss of the dungeon, who knows? Things are going great, and then the monster gets a lucky hit and one of the characters drops unconscious. And then the next round it happens again. Maybe it's the healer. People start dropping like flies and the monster still has a ton of hit points left over. You know you're heading for the TPK. It's what every party fears the most. If you're in a fight and one character drops unconscious, the rest of the party can usually keep them alive till the fight's over. It's not much fun for the player if their character's on their back for the whole fight, but it's just a speed bump. You can keep on going. But when the entire party buys it, there's no one to bring them back. It's tricky, but I'm gonna lay out a few ways you can handle this. Not every way will be perfect for every circumstance. Part of being a good DM is being flexible. So you have to read the situation. Some of these options might be good at one time and not others. And there's no such thing as a perfect call. It's possible that later on after the session, you'll be kicking yourself thinking, I could have handled that better. It happens to all of us, but don't sweat it. That comes with experience and knowledge. So what are the ways to handle the TPK? Okay, first up, the party wipes. You re-roll new characters maybe the same campaign or maybe a new campaign. That's just the price of admission. Look, D&D combat is thrilling, but a big part of that thrill is the threat that you can lose. Your character could die. If the players no longer fear characters can die, then combat becomes meaningless, mundane, and boring, which is the last thing we want. Look, sometimes the party experiences a string of really bad luck. The enemy rolls a bunch of great rolls and high damage and takes them out. Or the party keeps rolling ones and can't hit the enemy. Other times, the party makes a series of mistakes that lead to a wipe. That happens too. Either way, what's important is how you handle it in the moment. This works best with experienced parties and players. They've been down this road before. They've seen characters die, and although it's horrible, they know they get over it. And so they look forward to rerolling new characters sometimes. It's a fresh start for them, a chance to try something else, another class, another race, another combination. And depending on how you handle it, the death can be cathartic. If you wait till the last character falls and then gleefully shout, you guys suck, I win, be prepared for players not to be real happy with you. But if you handle it with appropriate drama, explaining how their characters are fighting valiantly against this foe, but they just can't quite defeat it. And they fall one by one gloriously and as heroes. That's fine. That might resonate with them. All kinds of wonderful stories are built around characters who fall tragically. Uh, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, pick your favorite fantasy book or movie or TV show. They've all got people that have passed and been mourned and they're not remembered as losers, but as heroes who gave their lives for something great. If you impress this upon your players, they can see their characters' deaths in the same light. And the total party kill becomes one more story in their repertoire of their history. Hey, remember that time we tried to steal from that red dragon and we got roasted? Wasn't that hilarious? My players have tons of those stories, uh, for good or for bad. Um, but we bring them up all the time because those are the memories we forged together. The victories are great, 
but the defeats can be awesome too if you play it right. This option also preserves the integrity of the game. D&D, especially combat, revolves around numbers and random chance. And when you involve random chance in something, there's a chance you could lose. Just ask any gambler at a casino. Sometimes your number just comes up. And if you never let the party risk losing, then what are they winning? Nothing. If there's no real challenge and no real stakes, all the victories are hollow and the party soon loses interest. If you have a campaign where the players win easily, fight after fight, win huge amounts of treasure with very little effort, and the players at first seem really into it but then grow bored, that's the problem. The stakes are not grabbing them. The challenges are not rising up to meet them. But you can fix that. Option number two is to fudge the dice rolls. Now this can be controversial. I should put a little red banner up right now. Um, doesn't have to be. Listen, I think almost all DMs do this from time to time, right? Uh, the party is facing a challenge. It could be combat, it could be a trap, something that is just not going the way it should, or the way you envisioned it. The combat might be terribly easy for the party. You thought it would be a good challenge and they tear through it in a round or two, taking hardly any damage, using up hardly any spell slots. And you think to yourself, this is just a breeze for them. So maybe one of the monsters who might've missed lands a hit instead, does some decent damage. It wakes the players up a little bit, gets their attention. That's fine because you're keeping the thrill of combat alive. And the opposite goes as well. Sometimes you'll have a combat that you think is well balanced and the players just get some bad luck or the creature is just more powerful than you gave it credit for. And it starts dropping your player characters one by one. And so maybe a couple of the times the creature rolls a hit, you fudge it to a miss. Or if it does hit, you reduce the damage dealt just to make it so it doesn't one shot the cleric. Um, the reasoning then again is solid. You're trying to preserve the integrity of your story in this case. Yes, the math lovers are gonna scream that you know, the odds are the odds and sometimes you roll snake eyes. And I just argued that exact same thing. Uh, the irony is not lost on me, but D&D is about building a story together. And if you envision a certain encounter to be a certain way, to be either a challenging but not lethal fight, this isn't the big boss, the big bad in your campaign. This is a lesser lieutenant and they just get lucky or the players do something that puts them in a bad situation inadvertently. And you're thinking, this isn't the way I want them to go out. Okay, you change a role or two. Um, I'm always gonna back that play if it preserves the fun for everybody and if you don't do it too often. That's also a downfall here. If you're constantly fudging roles, you have to look into your encounters. You're balancing them wrong. They're too easy, they're too tough, they're all over the place, whatever it is. Um, look at how you're balancing those encounters and try and correct it. Um, also, if the players catch you fudging roles, it will greatly diminish their faith in you. For one thing, they'll feel they can't trust you uh, to tell a story legitimately or to make a game that they have a fair chance at. And then if something bad does happen, they might accuse you of fudging it against them. Easier if they don't know what's happening or if they do, explain it calmly your reasoning. The fight was too easy, too hard, whatever it is, you're telling a story, ask their forgiveness, and if they demand you stop doing it, then stop, that's fine. Let the dice be the dice are. Um, but there's a bigger concern, I think, if they know you're fudging some rolls, is that they're gonna wonder if their victories were truly won by them and their characters, or that it was a give me. And pity victories are hollow. You don't want that. You want them to feel empowered, to be having fun. So the best thing to do is A, not fudge very often if you don't have to, and B, if you do do it, don't get caught. Some DMs I know make all their roles out in the open. 
so there's no chance for anybody to fudge anything. I respect that. Uh, that can be a thrilling way to play the game. Um, you know that the dice don't lie and they are what they are. Um, it's exciting to know that you can, your character could die at any moment with a series of bad rolls and the DM can't save you no matter what he wants to do, at least as far as the dice go. But um, I don't do that because I want to preserve the right to alter the story as it goes along. And so far it's worked out pretty well for me. I've thought about rolling out in front of everybody else. And even my players have told me they're okay with me not doing that. They prefer I don't do that. Um, that's just my group though. You do what your group wants to do and have the most fun. Option three is the cavalry comes in the nick of time. Uh, in this option, you're going to pull a deus ex machina out of your ass. Maybe a powerful NPC swoops in at the last minute to save the characters from death. Um, maybe another monster wanders into the combat and attacks the, co the monster that is attacking the PCs, like King Kong bashing those dinosaurs. Um, maybe the cleric's deity notices that you know, her beloved servant is about to die and grants uh, him a magical protection that uh, negates a couple crits, keeps him in the fight. Um, whatever you can come up with, D&D is a game of imagination. I'm sure you'll figure out something, some outside force to come in and save the day. Um, the obvious downside is that it takes agency away from the players to some degree. If some powerful force like Gandalf or Elminster swoops in to fireball all the bad guys and save the party, the party's going to feel a little cheated. Um, there's a time, long time ago, I was playing one of my favorite characters, an evil um, magic user slash cleric. And we were in the Temple of Elemental Evil, which is a module you know by now that I love, but I'm a player this time. And our party finds this statue of an old man. And of course, somebody touches it. And when they do, the statue transforms into the demigod I use, um, and who's evil and threatens to kill us all. And as we're waiting to decide as a party, do we attack him or grovel at his feet? Um, the DM had another demigod named St. Cuthbert, who is a very good deity, swoop in out of nowhere and smite I use and save us. Um, I knew we couldn't fight an evil demigod. I knew we were gonna get killed, but I did feel at the time that it was just, I was robbed of the experience. You know, give us a chance to role play, give us a chance to grovel or to fight or to escape or something. Having an outside force like that come in really didn't sit well with me, but that's my experience. Other players might say, well, that's perfect because they see it in movies and TV shows all the time where the heroes are in trouble and some ally swoops in to turn the tide. Gandalf at the, uh, uh, the Battle of Helm's Deep, you know, classic example. Um, so it's not wrong if you handle it correctly and it's all in how you handle it. So if you handle it with finesse and drama and play it up and still give the players a lot of agency to help solve the problem. Um, I think you'll get a good reception from that. Of course, this is something like fudging dice rolls. You can't do all the time. Uh, every other fight can't have Gandalf swooping in with a fireball to save them. That would get tiresome and you know comical, right? And the players will eventually feel like nothing has been earned. It's all being given to them, which is not what you want. So if you do do it, do it for a really good reason at the perfect time and very, very rarely. And if you do it right, it'll make the world seem like it's responding to the players. And when they're in danger, outside forces maybe notice and lend a hand. That makes them feel like they're not quite alone in this battle, which could be great. Again, it's all in how you handle it. So option four is maybe you're not really dead. Um, just because a party is defeated and knocked unconscious doesn't mean they're dead dead, right? 
Uh, first of all, when they drop unconscious, they might be still alive making death saves. Um, maybe they failed them in a different case, but if they are still conscious, you have some options as the DM. What if the monsters, instead of killing the PCs or letting them die in the battlefield, patch up their wounds and take them captive? Um, it happens a lot in books and movies, and it's a great storytelling device that the players wake up from unconsciousness, tied up in some filthy dungeon cell, um, slated to be sacrificed to the evil god of the region. Now they get a chance to uh, regroup, escape, and then they get some choices. Do they stay and try and fight the evil that took them captive or slink away to lick their wounds and come back another day? Um, all great things they can decide and a very uh, worthy adventure for any hero. Remembering that death is not permanent in D&D. Also, there are plenty of spells that can bring someone back from death. Uh, now with a party wipe, it might be difficult from a narrative standpoint to figure out how they're all resurrected. But okay, here's an idea. The party is all brought back from the dead by clerics of a good deity in the region. Uh, the hook is that it's 300 years after they died. Um, their friends and families are long gone, uh, unless they're elves or dwarves, and they've been brought back for a purpose. See, the monsters that killed them the first time have become really powerful over the last three centuries. They rule the entire kingdom or the world like dictators and demigods. And now the clerics have brought back the party because the PCs are the last ones to have the courage to challenge these evils. They bring them back with a chance for revenge. I don't know, something like that might work. Uh, it gives them a chance for another bite at the apple. Um, whatever you can come up with that you and your party agrees is fun. And like I said, the call won't always be perfect. Sometimes an idea will come to you in the moment and you'll try it. And later on you'll go, oh, I wish I could have a redo on that. That wasn't perfect. But that's part of the process. D&D uh, &D is not uh, a perfect science. It's an art form. It's a game we play together. And these choices we make for good or for ill uh, all contribute to the story we're telling together and the memories we're making together. One time I had a high level party wipe in a dungeon adventure. And instead of having them reroll new characters, I had the entire party reborn in hell as shades, the lowest of the uh, dead souls. And they had to maneuver through the politics of hell and around more powerful devils to try to find a portal to get back to their own bodies. And they did. And it was totally not planned from the start, but it turned out to be a very memorable adventure. That time you guys all traveled through hell as, as dead spirits. Um, it was just an example of something we pull off on the fly to give ourselves a chance to keep the characters going. And it worked out that time. Just like with bringing in the cavalry, um, this is something you want to do sparingly. Uh, it's not going to work too often. You know, if the party wipes multiple times in the same dungeon, <laughs> how many times can they be captured logically before it just becomes silly? So save it for when it makes sense. And, and next time the dice might just speak for themselves or you'll come up with some other alternative. Some DMs are more afraid of a party wipe than the players are. Uh, maybe they feel it's a personal failure if the party loses the game. Um, that's nonsense. It is a game. There is a chance of character death here. And in my experience, more often than not, the characters did things which led to their own demise. If they have agency, if they control their own destiny to some degree, then they shouldn't be blaming you if they wipe. Now, it's definitely possible to design an encounter which is too powerful for your party. Um, while combat should be a challenge, not every single combat needs to bring your party to its knees to the brink of death before they win. 
Um, I tend to mix up fight uh, difficulty levels, um, especially in a dungeon or a closed environment adventure. I'll have some weaker fights that I'm pretty confident the party can get through without really risking too much. And then I'll have a couple fights which are quite a bit more challenging. And I mix them up and the party never really knows what fight they're getting into until they're in it, which keeps them on their toes and keeps them operating efficiently um, most of the time. And they get that sense of mystery, the unexpected around each corner. They never quite feel 100% safe, which is what we're all going for. If you find your party is struggling through almost every fight and people are dropping left and right and being brought back from unconsciousness over and over again, maybe your encounters are just balanced a little bit too high. Tone it down a little bit. Um, not that you can't challenge them. Obviously, I'm not saying that. But if every single fight is right to the brink of death, then the party's going to over-prepare and over-analyze and bog themselves down. Now, if that's a specific dungeon you're going for, perfect. Because sometimes you might design an entire adventure which is just brutal um, on purpose. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if they're just investigating some local ruins where some spiders and some kobolds are hanging out, not every fight has to be one where the party has to use every single resource to win. Also, when things get dicey, players more often than not have the chance to retreat. Um, in my experience, they don't do it very often. Usually my groups, when confronted with a really challenging fight, tend to double down and go all in, um, you know, results be damned, and that's when a TPK can result. Um, but as long as they weren't trapped in that situation, as long as they had the option to retreat or somehow extricate themselves, that's not the DM's fault if they push forward regardless of all the signs and clues and rush right into a, a wipe. Uh, that's on them, and that's part of the game, and that's how they want to play it. That's great. Don't worry about it. But if you're feeling guilty about that, you really shouldn't. You gave them chances to get out, and they decided not to. Some DMs are afraid that their players will quit if they die. Um, this is largely irrational in my experience. Um, players realize it's a game, and in D&D, &D, death is just a speed bump most of the times. You roll a new character, it's cathartic. You work through your grief in about five seconds and move on. Um, don't be afraid of that. It's not going to happen. But let's just say worst case scenario, you have a player or players who actually threaten that if their characters die, that they will quit the game. What do you do? Um, my first suggestion is pull them aside outside the session for a little chat. If, where is this coming from? I mean, they should realize that it's a game where their characters are purposely throwing themselves into dangerous situations High risk, high reward, right? Well, if you want the reward, you have the risk involved. That's the game. If they don't understand or they don't care, they simply want to insist that their character never dies or else. I think my advice really is to consider playing without them. Um, that kind of emotional blackmail isn't healthy uh, for you or the game and, you know, if you did give in to that, you know, that threat, the other players wouldn't respect you or the game anymore. It would become meaningless. So it's only happened once or twice in 40 plus years for me. But if you find this happening to you, like I said, talk it out first if you can. And if you can't let that player go, they want to play something else, something where they can't lose. I'm not sure what kind of game that is, but it's not D&D. What I do not suggest is taking the total party kill off the table completely. Um, adventuring is a risky business. The thrill of danger is what they're coming for. 
And if your players suspect that their characters cannot die, no matter what they do, then the entire thrill of the adventure is gone. Desperation in small doses is invigorating. Um, your party probably won't remember that bland dungeon five years ago where they were never seriously challenged and they beat the boss with ease, got some treasure and went home. But they're never gonna forget that time that they were ambushed by a pack of T-Rexes and they only survived because Dorg the Barbarian single-handedly held off the monsters while the rest of the party escaped through a teleportation portal. Um, Dorg, you shall be missed, but your name rings on in the halls of Valhalla forever. Those are the kind of memories the party, your players, will remember their entire lives. So don't rob them of it. If they can't ever die, then they won't ever have lived, I think somebody said. Uh, yeah, but the whole, the whole point here is that uh, the danger is only thrilling if it feels real to the characters. Don't rob your players of that experience. And if things do go south, now you have a few tools to help you handle it. Uh, whatever you choose, um, choose it for the right reasons. Choose an option that delivers on the first commandment of all DMs, thou shalt deliver the fun. Know your players, know what they want, what they expect, what they can deal with, and what the situation calls for. And just do your best. <laughs> That's all for this time on Attacks of Opportunity. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you so much. We appreciate all your support. And until next time, have a good one. Oh, I almost forgot. If you have a favorite party wipe story from your D&D adventures, put it in the comments below. I'd love to read about it.